You're listening to a Weeby Geeks Network podcast. The Dining at Disney podcast. The Dining at Disney podcast. Your ultimate source about the wonderful world of dining at the Disneyland and Walt Disney World Resorts. If you are what you eat, then I only want to eat the good stuff. Kristen Hetzel Go and Jay Bratton are your guides on this culinary adventure. We'll prepare and serve with flair a culinary cabaret. Join them as they discuss the latest food news, expert tips, recommendations, and trip planning advice related to Disney food and dining. From quick service to fine dining, you will discover all the best restaurants and food as they hungrily explore the Disney parks. It brings folks together from all walks of life. The Dining at Disney podcast. And now, your host... Kristen Hensel Go and Jay Bratton. Okay, it is the Dining at Disney podcast, your ultimate source for everything Disney food at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. I'm Kristen. With me is Jay. Has your week been going all right? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I'm, I've been doing pretty good. It's uh, you know just recovering still from the 24 uh, hour kickoff event last week. <laughs> that was crazy. I saw all of the, those pictures and. Uh, Big Bubba, I know he was out there and actually did the full 24 hours. He was reporting in on some of that stuff for Sorcerer Radio. Him, uh, He was covering the Disneyland. And then I know uh, Steve Sanders was covering the uh, Walt Disney World one. But 24 hours, especially as crazy it was for you guys since you had the 60th anniversary kicking off on the same day. I don't think I could do that. It was amazing. You know, they, they reached capacity at both parks. So they shut it, shut it down several times, and it was it was a big mess. And you know, a, a lot of people were kind of grumbling and griping and moaning and stuff like that. But I'm like, people, okay, it was on national news. It was on Good Morning America. It was on you know the the whatever the other morning show. I mean, you know, ABC was pumping it up for for weeks. You know, so it's like, what do you expect? I mean, you know, people are going to be there and they're going to want to take part in it and so you know you should you should expect that yeah my plan's on going to the 100. (laughs) (laughs) that's that's on my bucket list i want to do the 100 that would be so cool (laughs) yeah (laughs) so uh let's see well we've got plenty of news stories for today um We've got some stuff about their new hand sanitizers that Disney is putting out. Super cool looking. The new truffles that uh, have been launched for the 60th anniversary of Disneyland. Uh, We also have some special Epcot Food and Wine Festival announcements that was just released, as well as a Disney dining plan rumor. And you have the full coverage of that 24-hour kickoff party for the 60th anniversary. So let's go ahead and dive into some appetizers. Jay, what do you have as far as news for us? Well, I'll start off by saying Happy Disneyland Day, everybody. (laughs) Uh, Officially today, June 1st, uh, the state capital of California has declared this day as Disneyland Day. Uh, It was uh, apparently, uh, let's see, who who all was involved in this? Whatever, the the, the Senate and, you know, all the people in Sacramento or whatever were, you know, involved in in making this declaration, which is pretty cool. So the next thing, it's going to have to be National Disneyland Day. That's the next thing. (laughs) <laughs> uh and, hey, well, and the, thing, the, the part in turkey gets to go to disneyland that's true so. that's true uh and then in some other news that's not as momentous but it's still pretty cool uh they have some new hand sanitizer merchandise so you know all of us we like you know when we go eat out and stuff like that you want to make sure you're you're clean and and uh, you're not going to get any of those grimy germs and bacteria on your food so the best way to do that and is uh, squirt a little hand sanitizer well actually wash your hands uh, but <laughs> uh, in a pinch if you're like at a quick service location or whatever and you need to need to kind of do a little you know sanitizing on the go then uh, this is a uh, one of those alternatives that you can um, you know, use uh, as a as kind of a quick fix, and some of the some of the uh, hand sanitizer uh, cases are pretty cool, and and they're not just like you know just imprints. You know, they're they're you know like three D models and stuff like that, which is uh, amazing. 
They're have nice. You seen them? They, yeah. I haven't seen them in person, but these look, I saw them online uh, this morning. And I was right. like, these look really cool. You know, I mean, I think what happened is Disney was like, all of these people now carry Bath and Body Works hand sanitizer with them everywhere. And, you know, they've, what, three or four years have had some really cool different styles of wines like turtles and then it you know christmas they'll have it in the shape of a christmas tree or whatever and i think disney's thinking you know bath and body works like has that marked down as like their territory we need to we need to get some of that money from them so i think that's why they came out with this yeah oh well, it's a clever idea that's for sure one idea that i had when uh, I was there at the parks this, uh, you know, last week. <sighs> okay, so you see the, the uh, you know, got the popcorn buckets, you got the souvenir sippers, you got the coffee mugs, all these containers for food items, right? So I'm thinking, what else could there be? And I came up with the idea, a churro holder. Why not? You know what I mean? Like you could have a little, <laughs> little thing. It's like a lightsaber. So you stick the churro in there and then, uh, you know, you don't get your hands all, uh, you know, filled with sugar and cinnamon. And, and uh, you know, when the, when you first get the, the churro off the stand, it's pretty hot. So this will this will save your hand in that regard, too, because I saw people, you know, with the wax paper and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, you know, let's divide it up. And, you know, they were like kind of dusting their hands off with the sugar and the cinnamon. And I was like, you know what, they should come up with a churro holder and then that way, you know, they don't have to deal with that. Can you imagine if they sold that during the start, like did a Star Wars, like a lightsaber uh, hilt? Right. They sold it during like the, um, the half marathon or they sold it during Star Wars weekends. How many of those people would buy? Oh yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, so, I, I what I need to do is I need to come up with the concept design and then uh, try to try to trademark it and beat Disney to the punch. But I wouldn't exactly. be able to <laughs> use any official Disney, uh, you know, logos or you know icons or whatever. But yeah, you know, whatever I can uh, see what I see see what I can come up with. No, but you can make a lightsaber hilt one. That's There's true. There's no trademark on the hilt, so there you go. That would That's... be pretty cool. Uh, also, in uh, news for the 60th anniversary, since uh, we're talking about that, uh, they have the uh, truffles. And the Disney Parks blog talked about the truffles that were available at the restaurants. Um, they have uh, over at the Blue Bayou, let me uh, scroll down the list here. They, they actually have some pretty cool uh, flavors and uh, really unique um, styles of boxes. Uh, that are classy. Uh, so the the Blue Bayou restaurant truffle flavors are creme brulee, bananas foster, a king cake, which uh, is confectioner sugar and lemon juice, and a mint julep truffle, which sounds awesome. And then over at the Carthay Circle restaurant, they have the Carthay Manhattan and the Brown Derby, B52 coffee, and a hazelnut tiramisu. Those just sound fabulous. <laughs> and then, of course, Steakhouse 55, the, the other class, classy restaurant, is the uh, uh, Cosmopolitan, the Kahlua, the 24-layer chocolate cake, and the Primitivo, which is raspberry, blackberry, cherry, plums, and raisin. Hmm. My mouth is watering just reading that. <laughs> <laughs> So I, apparently uh, these uh, the ones at Carthay Circle Restaurant Steakhouse 50, uh, 55 uh, actually have alcohol in them, and I was like, really? Wow, that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> now, which one sounds the most appealing to you out of all those flavors? <sighs> Boy, that's. Uh, I know it's a man. difficult question. I I was talking with uh, Jeff Davis from uh, DW60. And he was like, hands down, I want the Bananas Foster. I'm like, really? You know, I, I'd actually have to concur with him on that one. Um, that Either that one or I was looking at the 24-layer uh, chocolate cake. I mean, That was his, his runner-up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. amazing. Oh, great minds think alike, right? <laughs> See, I like the uh, Primitivo. Okay. The raspberry, blackberry, cherry, plum, raisin. I'm like, that just 
I, but see, I really like berries, so I haven't oh, okay. leaned towards that. There you go. The yeah, the other one that good. sounds intriguing to me is the uh, king cake. Um, I'm not sure. I, you know, I I guess king cake is pretty popular in New Orleans, right? So, yes. and uh, I've never, you know, I mean, it, to put it in a uh, truffle form sounds very very interesting. Have you so, had king cake? I've had something similar uh, to king cake. And uh, I forgot what they call it, but you know, because it's a, a Catholic thing, you know, for um, for Lent, right? It's um, it's from for Mardi Gras, yeah. Right, right. Which you know, you know, over here in California, we have a very large uh, population of uh, Mexican um, Mexican people, and um, they uh, you know they all celebrate Lent. Or, I mean, or you know, something similar to Mardi Gras. I mean, not on the same scale, obviously, but you know, I mean, they they like to do. You know the the fat oh, tea, yeah. so to speak. You know before before Lent begins. Yeah, pretty much every country that has either a, a city or the country itself is predominantly Catholic. They always have some kind of like in um in Italy, it's Carnival that they have it. You know, so with the Venetian masks and everything. So right, right. <laughs> I have had king cake when I was in college. I worked for Copeland's in New Orleans, which is, it's no longer where I live, but it's a New Orleans restaurant. And uh, it was actually owned by Al Copeland, who is known for, do you, I don't remember, do you guys have Popeyes out there? Yes. Okay. He, he well, he's passed since, but he owned Popeyes. Oh, okay, cool. So, but the management had come from New Orleans when they opened this restaurant and the general manager would order a king cake and have it delivered from New Orleans for us. Wow. Every, yeah. Every Mardi Gras we had king cake. It was so good. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I'll have to try it someday. The, the authentic king cake, not, in, you uh -huh. know, not the, uh, the ones that uh, the different variations or whatever. Uh, the other thing too, which uh, the Disney blog didn't mention though, is that they, when I was there uh, on the 22nd, they have this new box set of truffles, which I thought was very cool. Uh, it's not just truffles. Well, it, excuse me. They have the truffles, which is like in a diamond shaped box, but then they also have like this big chocolate box set, which has uh, truffles, uh, some chocolate bark and other candies. And it looks really fabulous. I mean, you know, if you go to the Dining at Disney uh, website and you click on the link, uh, the article link, uh, you'll see all the pictures that I posted up there. And, and um, they put a really nice, dis nice display in the stores to uh, to sell these things. Yeah, I had actually received some photos of some of that stuff. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's a good thing <laughs> I don't live so close. I'd be broke after a day of buying all this stuff. <laughs> Just like the uh, the truffles that you can only get in the store, uh, in, in each of the restaurants, you have to actually sit down and eat. And I'm like, that makes me very tempted to make a reservation at all three of them when I go in August. Right. Just to buy the, the truffles. Be like, yeah, I'm just going to have this, you know, and get an appetizer and that be it so I can get the truffles. Like, there you they go. They so good. And the boxes look really pretty that they're putting them in. Yes, they they really went above and beyond, the, especially that diamond shaped box. Uh, if you see the photo, it's wrapped in like this. Uh, it almost looks like a satin, a blue satin bow. It looks yeah. really, really good. So they they've done a great job. I, I this was totally unexpected for me. I mean, I I was shocked to see it uh, when I went into the store, but I'm glad though. I mean, you know, the, the the other things that they have, you know, with the with the 60th anniversary logo, like the lollipops and the you know the other little snack items. I mean, I, I expected that, you know, but that the truffles I did not expect, and that's a that's a pleasant surprise to say the least. Yeah, they're very. Very cool, very upscale, you know. Mm -hmm, definitely. And the final uh, bit of news is about a new art design collection, I guess, if you will. Uh, it's called the Disneyland Diamond Anniversary Decades Art. And they basically pay homage to the various icons and attractions and characters of the you know past six decades of Disneyland's existence. And it includes, uh, you know, the 
uh, pins, and then more you know appropriate to this podcast is they have dinnerware, which uh, it, you know inclusive of uh, plates and mugs and things like that. So I I, I thought uh, you know it was really nice that they're doing this, and um, the the thing I look at uh, on you know in the pictures or whatever is the uh, the coffee mug looks really cool. I don't drink coffee, but uh, just the I coffee mug it. itself looks awesome. Now, see, I do drink coffee, but things like that I would never drink out of. <laughs> I actually have a, I have a collectible collection of, that sounded ridiculous, but any which way I have a nice collection of, <laughs> of Disney things that you would not, things you wouldn't sell, you know, that you're going to put on display that are nice and, right. and, and that are limited. And I've got some old mugs from, it's about 20 years ago that are, are Disney mugs that, you know, they no longer make some of the stuff on them no longer exists. And it's one of those things I put up in a nice, nice bookshelf and, you know, nobody's allowed to touch it. These are my collectible pieces. So yeah. I definitely am going to add some of these to it. I want the, um, the one that says 1975 to 84. Okay. That one I want. And then the 95 to 04, those two are, are my definite. I must get these. Yeah. I just hope they don't sell out of them before I make it there. Well, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard, you know, with merchandise, it's hard to, to tell sometimes. And, you know, there's, there's some items that you think, oh man, it's going to be a huge seller. I better get, you know, two or three of them. And then, you know, later on I can sell it on eBay. And it's just like, then you see, you know, the a year later, it's like the same merchandise <laughs> in the store still, you know, and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, the, in and, and, you know, that's the same with pins, you know, I, I, I there's just no rhyme or reason, uh, you know, on some of the things, you know, why they sell so well versus other things that don't sell so well. I mean, it just, it's, it's hard to, to, you know, anticipate what's going to sell really, really well. But yeah, we're, my wife is going to get um, that coffee mug. I'll see, we can maybe get a second one. And, and uh, if they do sell out, then I'll, then I'll have a backup for you when you come in August. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Those are the two that I really want. I actually have the prices for them. Okay. Okay. So Shoot. I'm going to go with the, the non-food related. The pen is $15.95 and the t-shirt is $26.95. For the plate, it's $12.95, which I don't think that's too bad for the plate. Right. The mug is $9.95, which I expected to be more because it has the D for the handle. Right, exactly. But I'm like, when you think about it for a collectible piece, if that's how you're going to have it, then that's worth it. Can you imagine what these are going to sell on eBay for? I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to look and see, see if any of these have been put up there. And we'll have to talk about it next podcast. But I'm going to have to investigate and see what people are trying to sell them for. Uh, the last thing, um, uh, the last news item is about desserts. And this was uh, just released by the Disney Parks blog today, so I haven't had an opportunity to write an article regarding this. Uh, but so I just kind of okay. So so basically, they're saying, well, there's going to be six new desserts, right? To to you know celebrate the 60th anniversary, and uh, you know, but the first one is the the lemon cup cupcake, which they had already announced previously. So I'm I'm not sure, you know. I I guess um, whatever. It's fine. Uh, and then also the, the orange cupcake. But uh, the new ones that I was intrigued about is uh, a something called a diamond tiramisu at the Wine Country Trattoria. And uh, I guess it's tiramisu made from uh, Italian mas mascarpone, uh, marsala wine, and espresso soaked lady fingers uh, topped with cocoa powder and finished with chocolate curls and espresso sauce. So that sounds pretty good. Then they have a Meyer lemon creme brulee tart at the Blue Bayou restaurant. So it's, uh, I guess, a creamy Meyer lemon creme brulee. Uh, it's in a crunchy sweet tart shell topped with blueberry compote and a sparkling silver chocolate diamond. Sounds that that good. Just, Yeah, that diamond, that chocolate diamond looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it does. And if, from the image that they have, though, it looks more like cherry. 
than right. it does blueberries. That's what I thought at first glance that those were cherries. Right, right. Then the other one they have is at the Carnation Cafe, and this one is called the White Chocolate Bavarian Diamond Strawberry Rhubarb Shortcake. Whew, that's a mouthful. That's what I was just going to say. <laughs> yeah, it's, boy, oh boy. That's, <laughs> well, that's, you know, they should just called it the Diamond Anniversary Shortcake. There you go. Uh, but see, then by saying the whole thing, you don't even need a description to go with it. <laughs> that's very true. But what the thing that uh, makes this unique, it, it looks like an upside down diamond, the, uh, the, the way that they shape the shortcake, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And then the final item is at, well, I guess so this will be uh, available at multiple locations. And this one's a chocolate cake. Uh, I mean, it doesn't sound too exciting, but, you know, you can get it at the Plaza Inn, the Rancho del Zocolo restaurant, uh, French Market, Cafe Orleans, uh, in Disneyland, and then over at DCA, uh, Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta, and then also Steakhouse 55 at Disneyland Hotel. And it's the description states that it's a chocolate layer cake with caramel ganache, chocolate crunchy pearls, fleur de sel, mm, fleur de sel, that works, uh, an apricot compote, and a pabana mousse, which is banana, passion fruit, mango, lemon, and a truck chocolate truffle mousse topped with uh, chocolate ganache and a sparkly silver chocolate diamond. I totally underestimated this chocolate cake. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the description just saying it's a chocolate cake was sort of underwhelming, and then I started reading the, the actual composition, and I was like, oh my goodness, look at all that stuff. <laughs> I know I'm going to be trying that. Oh yeah, definitely. That's uh, That's on my list for sure. So that's it. That's the uh, the six desserts, and um, hope uh, you know if people try it out, then let us know how how it is and and uh, your thoughts and stuff like that. To you know, leave us some comments on the Dining at Disney website. Yeah, or they can email us as well at podcast sure, at Disney dot com or Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Any anyone exactly. <laughs> well, I've got some fun food news. One of the things everybody who goes to Disney Disney World is most excited about is Food and Wine Festival. It's one of the biggest things. And this year they're celebrating 20 years. And the festival is going to take place from September 25th to November 16th. So the, uh, this year they did add another week, but it's at the end, which I like because it's so hot in September. So that's a good time. They do have a few new things. Some of the new dishes are going to be pepper, bacon, mac and cheese at Farm Fresh, Scottish citrus thistle at Scotland, seared venison loin with wild mushroom ragu, and kumara dumplings at New Zealand, and grilled sweet and spicy bushberry shrimp with pineapple, peppers, onions, and snap peas at Australia. I am glad to see a few of the dishes changing out because, you know, when you go year after year and it doesn't change, we're like, well, I don't really need to try that. I've had that before. Um, yeah, they got to keep you, keep you, uh, you know, guessing, I guess. It's like, um, uh, like a treasure hunt, you know, it's like you, you like to discover new things and, and, and all that. And that's, uh, that's great. Yeah. One of these years I want to go, I mean, you know, I, I would, you know, I, I'm, <sighs> I don't plan on going to Disney World in, in the near future, but when I do go in, you know, sometime in the far future, I, I would like to plan it around this food and wine festival because it sounds really spectacular. Oh, yeah. It, it's a lot of fun. And they've got a great concert series that they put on, which we'll get to the full list in a little bit. But it's, it's one of those things if you really want to hit every – marketplace that's there you need pretty much three days and you can just go we're gonna snack and we're having no meals because i think it took us that long last year to cover all of the booths because there was like 30 of them wow i always try and get other people i'm like come on come hang out with us at the you know at epcot we got to try some food at least that way because then you're like oh can i have a bite of yours <laughs> There you yeah, go. Yeah, you can try exactly. ours. You know, that way you kind of knock out more more foods than if you're one or two people because that's a lot of food to try and eat. But, yep. Sharing is caring. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, also Eat to the Beat concert series has a few new artists. It's going to include Tiffany, Everclear, Maxi Priest, and Shaka Khan. In a little bit, I'll get to the full schedule for that. But some new artists coming in, which is always nice. Tiffany, um, oh. like the 80s Tiffany? Yes. Like, oh, I think man. we're alone now. <laughs> I think we're alone now. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can't believe she was, she's made a comeback. Well, I, <laughs> not really a comeback, but, you know, just at least she's putting on concerts. That's pretty cool. Oh, see, that's the thing is a lot of the bands are from, like, the, the 80s, 90s, and then as recent as now that come in. It's, it's free. Wow. It's a senior park commission. So. That's cool. Yeah. It's it's hard to try and plan a trip around that though if you don't live close by but i always try and go oh which week do we go this week or that week because we need to be there this date so i'm still working on that <laughs> and for the kids big and small there is remy's ratatouille hide and squeak so guests will be able to participate in a scavenger hunt for little remy statuettes hidden around the world showcase they're going to give you a map, stickers, and a prize. So I'm curious to what the prize is going to be. But I'm going to do it because Remy is one of my favorite little characters. So I'm going to go around and take pictures of Remy everywhere. Let's see. As far as what's returning, you're going to have the celebrity chefs come back like Kat Cora, Jamie Dean, Robert Irvine, Rock, Rock Harper, and John Ash, who actually he participated in the inaugural year back in... 1985, right? No. I'm not sure. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> the first year is 20 years ago. My math isn't right today. Uh, it'd be 1995 um, it's, yeah. if it's 20 years. Right. Uh, let's see. After last year, Ocean Spray Cranberry Bog wasn't there, but it is coming back. It's one of my favorite things. I think it is so cool that they take that big section fill it with water and put all the cranberries in and they've got cast members who are in there with the uh, waiters on and walking through and telling people all about the cranberry bog and a couple years ago I got invited um, through Ocean Spray to go to like their little sneak peek kind of premiere launch party for the bog and they gave us the opportunity to get into the bog for like 10 minutes oh wow that's cool it was, it was it's a lot like the uh the cranberry commercials right with the, the yeah guys it's just like that those antics. things are heavy though oh the waiters those, oh yeah yeah i didn't expect it to be so heavy and it was definitely meant for somebody who was about a foot taller than me it was like <laughs> oh wow i'm a little small for that <laughs> uh, up to your armpits practically right <laughs> exactly other things that will be back are going to be uh, the culinary demonstrations, the beverage and mixology seminars, Back to Basics will also be back at the Festival Center. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, Chase Lounge. So for Chase debit and credit card holders, not just the Disney one, but if you have Chase just in general, uh, they've got brought back the lounge, which is a great place to like plug in your devices, recharge your phone, your tablet, your camera battery, relax, enjoy some complimentary beverages. In the past, they've had the Coca-Cola freestyle machines in there. I think those are so much fun that you could just mix and match all these different drinks. I can imagine as a kid, that would be the coolest thing. Because I remember when I was about like seven years old and you get to go to like the convenience store and you would put every single flavor of pop into the cup. Right. Yeah. yeah. I. Yeah. They. They're starting to bring those. I remember that. Uh, like several years back, when they. Uh, when the concept design was first coming out, and they had it at the uh, food. It was at the last uh, California or DCA uh, Food and Wine Festival, and I. I thought it was really neat, and but I hadn't seen it until like probably this maybe about a year and a half ago, and then all of a sudden I'm seeing them everywhere at the at not only just you know fast food establishments but uh, one of the movie theaters i go to has one as well 
And I'm surprised because, I mean, movie theaters, you know, I mean, they make their money on, on you know, concessions. Yeah. And for them to allow people to get their own drink was was quite amazing. But I love it. I mean, I just, I, I fill that sucker up and I, you know, get different. I love that you can put, you know, different um, combinations of, you know, like orange or vanilla or, you know, mm -hmm. the lemon or cherry, you know, what have you. So it's like, uh, you know, and, and it's not just like coca-cola i mean you know you have like powerade you have you know other non uh carbonated drinks as well so i thought that's that's really really cool yeah dasani has like a whole bunch of flavors that are in mm -hmm. the machine as well as um seagram's mm -hmm. is in there and they've got flavored ones but i think it's so cool i'm like oh look let's try this flavor there you go so that's pretty much everything that is returning as far as, uh, as I mentioned, the Eat to the Beat concert series, the full schedule came out. Um, it is free with your Epcot admission, and this is the lineup. So September 25th through the 27th is David Cook. You um, might remember him from American Idol. He was the winner one of the years. September 28th through 29th is Wilson Phillips. We actually saw them last year. They were pretty good. Hmm. Uh, September 30th through October 1st is Christopher Cross. October 2nd through the 4th, Starship featuring Mickey Thomas. I swear he, he must be booked to do this every year for like the next probably 20 years hmm. because he is always at Flower and Garden and at Food and Wine. And unfortunately, I've never heard of him, but that's okay. Um, uh, You know the song, We Built This City? Yes. Yeah, okay. that's Starship. Oh, okay. No, okay. October 8th through the 9th is Pointer Sisters. The 10th through the 11th is 38 Special. 12th through the 13th, Rick Springfield. 14th through the 16th is one of my favorites, Sugar Ray. Tell you, Mark McGrath definitely puts on a good show. He's got so much energy. October 17th through the 18th is the SOS Band. 19th through the 21st, Air Supply. 22nd through the 23rd is Fuel. 24th through the 25th, new this year's Tiffany. 26th through the 28th is Dennis DeYoung, a original member of Styx. The 29th through the 30th is Jody Messina. October 31st through November 1st is Everclear. Let's see. Uh, November 2nd through the 4th is Boys to Men. 5th through the 6th is Sister Hazel. 7th through the 9th is is Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. They're another one that is always there. The 10th through the 12th is Hanson. 13th through the 14th, new is Maxi Priest. And the 15th through the 16th is Shaka Khan, who is also new this year. You know, one thing in the past, it's pretty much always been three nights that people have been there. And it looks like this year, there's a lot of them where they're only going to be there for two nights. So I think that's kind of interesting. Not sure why they've decided to change that, but it appears that they have. And then my last bit of news is a rumor that has been swirling around the internet. Uh, again, this is a rumor. Disney has not confirmed any of this, but with you know, everybody planning and already having, you know, in their mind, oh, I want to get this with the snack credit or I want to do that. This will give you a little bit of heads up so you won't be quite so shocked if something has changed. Um, the rumor is that on Sunday, May 31st, this went into effect. And they're saying now, guests have apparently, I guess, suggested that they'd like to change things up when it comes to the dessert option. So by request only, yes, we'll have the option to exchange a dessert for a side salad, cup of soup, or a fruit plate. Of course, this is where available. Um, they still are not allowing you to exchange it for an appetizer. Guests who participate in the deluxe premium or platinum dining plans now have the option to select an adult or children's entree with their table service credit. So if your kid is seven years old and he eats a lot of food and he has unique tastes and he wants to order off the adult menu, he now has the opportunity to do so. But this is only with deluxe, premium, and platinum. 
When it comes to quick service entitlements, the one thing that has changed is you can substitute a dessert or a non-alcoholic beverage with an eligible snack. It has to be within the same transaction so you can't get the entree and get your drink and then come back and go, oh, instead I wanna get the snack item for the dessert. You have to do it all together. Um, let's see, uh, kids, again, uh, Guests may select an adult meal for their kids and adults can select from the kids meal. You can also swap a quick service meal for up to three snack credits. So, you know, for breakfast, this might be a great option because that way you could get your coffee, you can get a cookie and a muffin and all of those things are included, you know, then it's one quick service meal. Um, which I'm thinking that might be really cool during the food and wine festival to be able to swap out quick service credits for snack credits that way. So on the, the snack credits, uh, just if I re re recall correctly here, that's the one where you can get like a, like a bag of chips or uh, like a cookie or something like that. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I, I remember we, we had done the, the uh, dining plan when we were at Walt Disney world. And one of the things that we did was we, used our uh, snack credits for souvenirs so we bought you know they it was during christmas time so they had the gingerbread cookies in the packages so mm -hmm. we were like there you go that's that's our our gift to uh people you know when, you, when we come back oh a lot of people will do that at the end of their trip if they have a whole bunch right. of snack credits yes they'll get a whole bunch of the cool little you know like um mickey rice crispy treats you know different things like that to take home to their kids and are like hey look mom and dad are gone but look what we brought you <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's never a bad idea right right but they're also looking to change the snack entitlements as well what they're saying with this is in the past one of the things you had to do is if you ordered like a, a mickey pretzel well uh -huh. and you want the cheese the cheese you would have to use a snack credit or pay out of pocket for it, which was normally about a dollar. Okay. Well, now they're saying they want to do it as a single serving item is what you can use a snack credit for. And that means uh, you can get a funnel cake, you can get caramel apple. Uh, in the past, those things were excluded. But now if you get a funnel cake, you can then get the topping on top of it and it's included. So that'd be nice. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it does, uh, it just makes sense to you know to me, but whatever. I I I'm hoping these rumors are true because some of the yeah. stuff it seems like it'll be a very nice change. Um, all of the novelty ice cream items, hand scooped ice cream, including sundaes, does not include two or more scoops or the ones in the souvenir bowls. All side items at quick service locations can be redeemed for snack credit. Um, as I mentioned, dipping sauces and toppings that you pre previously had to either use a snack credit or uh, pay for it out of pocket will now all be included as one. Soups will be included. Uh, select quick service breakfast item. So things that were originally part of, only part of an entree you can get now. So like a side of bacon, sausage, eggs, potatoes, cereal with milk, French toast sticks, biscuits and gravy, oatmeal, quinoa, grits, hard boiled eggs. Those are some of the things that are now gonna be uh, included. Um, we, I did notice something strange on the Disney website when I was looking at it the other day. Um, it's now some of the places that used to say Disney dining plan accepted no longer do. So hmm. Sunshine Tree Terrace, which is where you've seen the orange bird, that's where the orange bird comes from. Uh, that no longer has that on it, as well as Aloha Isle, which is where we get our Dole Whips. And I'm like, oh, please don't tell me this means I cannot use my sat credits for Dole Whips anymore. That would suck big yes, time. Yes, it would. <laughs> but again, as I said, these are just rumors, so don't take them as, as fact. We're still waiting to uh, hear from Disney on what uh, official changes will be made uh, 
it seems that rumors are saying they're expecting Disney to make the announcement on June 4th. So we'll just have to see. Just keep checking back to the website and we'll have all of that there for you. Now, main dish time. You've got a lot to talk about, Jay. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, as you know, I was there at the, the resort for the 24-hour kickoff. I wasn't there the entire 24 hours, obviously. Uh, but uh, I was there not only that day, but I was there the previous two days as well for a merchandise event at the Disneyland Hotel. So I was able to spend three days in a row at Disneyland, which isn't a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the merchandise event uh, was pretty cool. I, I won't go into it uh, too too heavily here because, you know, it's just not really food related per se. Uh, I mean, there was some merchandise, you know, food mer related merchandise. Um, but I did want to note a few things. They did give us a snack on uh, on Thursday. Uh, no, excuse me. The Thursday was the 22nd. So on the 21st, no. Yeah, yeah. The twenty first was the um, was the Thursday. So yeah. So on Thursday, uh, they gave us a snack, which was a rice ki uh, rice crispy treat uh, in the shape of a Mickey head, which was pretty cool, you know. And it was included with the event, which was nice. And then they also gave us um, some other swag, but uh, it, one was a pillow, and the other thing was a paperweight, which were, were really nice. But at the end of the the day on Thursday. Uh, after this uh, one panel discussion, they gave us the Mickey balloon. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. And so the uh, and for the people that are on video here, you can see in the background, I have the blue uh, Mickey shaped, uh, uh, Mickey shaped popcorn bucket. And then uh, my wife got the red one. So that was pretty cool that we got to two different colors. And then uh, so the, that made us, you know, the next day going on the 22nd for the 24 event, all we had to do was get the purple one to, to kind of complete the, the whole trifecta, right? So that they was look that like was they're pretty good size, too. Yeah, they are. Um, I don't know the exact dimensions, but, uh, you know, you could see next to my head, you know, I got it's uh, it's fairly, fairly good size. I, I wonder if I have a ruler here. Yeah, actually, I do have a ruler. So the ruler measures the height at about 10 inches and the width at oh, about 10 inches as well, maybe a little bit wider, about 10 and a half inches. And the way, if you haven't seen it, uh, the way that the popcorn is stored is in the back of the bucket and uh, just kind of opens up like a little scoop. So it's I pretty see, neat. I would have thought it was from the top that it went in between the ears. Yeah, that, I, I know. You know, when uh, first observing it, I had seen it, uh, you know, in person on um, the Wednesday, you know, the first day of the merchandise event, we were walking around the park and all the, you know, the various media outlets were there, you know, radio stations, television stations and so forth. And they gave them the all the, all three buckets because I'm sure they paid a lot to, to be there to cover the the, the opening so um, they uh, anyways they they were given these buckets and they they had the audacity to put it on display in front of their radio booths you know I was like ah oh, such a tease you know I want those buckets so bad and uh, <laughs> lo and behold the, the following day on Thursday we did uh, receive that as a gift uh, as part of the, the merchandise uh, event so it was really cool but yeah when i first observed it i was like how is this thing open you know and then i i finally found out for myself and uh what was cool too is they they provided us popcorn at the event as well so that was a nice little touch you know it wasn't just the popcorn bucket and saying oh there you go you know move on you know they actually gave us a, a bucket of popcorn so that was that was really neat wow that's cool yeah and then uh so so the the next morning uh, for the 24 hour kickoff event we knew it was going to be crazy I, we had already heard you know the night before people were lining up they didn't officially allow uh you to line up until two o'clock in the morning but people you know people don't care you know they're just going to line up regardless and you know we were already seeing you know 11 o'clock at night the night before you know people you know tweeting out oh i'm already in line and blah 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 and and uh you know then they showed it in the on the news in the morning uh, when I first woke up. We, see, uh, we had planned 
we were like, you know what? It, it just people are going to be nuts, and the the park opens at six o'clock in the morning. Everybody, gonna, everybody's going to be jam packed to to try to get inside. The, you know, both both resort uh, parks, and so we were like, you know, we'll go at like seven, you know, seven thirty. And I talked to Chris Allison from the the Diz Geek podcast, and I was like, "Hey, dude, you've been to these twenty four hour events, you know? Do do you think that's a good plan? Like seven seven thirty? He's like, "Oh no, man, it's going to be a crazy line." That's now. I was like, "You know what? Whatever, so be it." And you know, I'm still going to go there regardless, you know, because I I just don't want to be there at six and you know with that mass crowd. And you know, I figured that if anything, it'd line out line up along um you know the the street. And, uh, you know, I'll just, just wait there in, in, in comfort and, uh, you know, not have to worry about, you know, getting cold, you know, from, from the night air. So anyway, so we woke up, I woke up at around, I don't know, five o'clock or whatever. And, and I told my wife, I said, you know what? I said, I think I'm going to grab some breakfast breakfast before we go because I, you know, who knows how long this, the line's going to be. And that was actually a really great idea because once we got inside the park, Every single counter service, quick service, every place that was open had a huge line. And it was amazing. I mean, you know, whatever, not every restaurant was open, but they definitely opened a lot of places earlier than normal. And in fact, uh, some of the popcorn stands, that normally the popcorn stands don't open until 10 or 11 in the morning, but, you know, they were all open like 8 o'clock. So in in they all had lines as well, but it wasn't for the popcorn per se. It was more for the merchandise, you know. Oh yeah. So, and um, so the the way it worked out, uh, we got there at around I'd say seven fifteen in the morning. We just walked in. I mean, literally, we just walked in. There was no really? line whatsoever. And I was I was astounded. I was like, wait a second, isn't there supposed to be like this huge mass of people or whatever? But by that point, they'd already, you know, they'd anticipated the crowds and they had let people in just just, you know, just you know, in a smooth, orderly fashion. So by the time we got there, there was nobody in line. And I'll just show the only line that there was uh um an issue. Uh, that there was an issue was the uh, the line to get tickets, which I'll I'll share the shot here. You can see, uh, yeah. Wow. So you could see that that the uh, you know the line was pretty pretty crazy, and then the other uh, one that had oh, and then just to kind of show you the line for. Yeah, this was over here at the, <laughs> I mean, it was this, it, you know, this is the, the, you know, I mean, it just the way this line, if you can, kind of, well, I guess you can't see my, my pointer, my, my little mouse thing here, but the line actually went out the door from the River Barrel Terrace all the way, it wrapped around behind to care uh, parts of the Caribbean all the way into uh, Adventureland, and no. so yeah, it was it was wow. nuts. And you know, this was for for breakfast. So I figured, okay, thank goodness we ate breakfast, and you know, we were just walking around, and and uh, we went to uh, over at um, the popcorn uh, the popcorn station uh, near the Haunted Mansion, and that's the only one that had the uh, the purple Mickey shape. Uh, Mickey balloon. So that's what we got there. And the line for that was 45 minutes. And that was like at nine, nine o'clock in the morning or whatever. So, you know, it was, it was just, no matter where you went, there's a, there's a line. And then, uh, the, yeah, it was, it was insane. And, you know, everybody, uh, you know, no matter whether it was the blue, the red, you know, whatever color of the bucket was, they uh, they had uh, you know a line to to get it and you know the the one in Frontierland uh, had uh, the this one which is the mine train uh, modeled That's after cool. the Big Thunder Ranch that. mine train yeah it is cute and I you know when I first saw pictures of this I thought it, it was actually going to be diamonds on the top but it's really it's a it's a gold color which I thought was interesting and the uh, the bucket is. Um, you know it's a pretty good size and it's got the Disneyland 60 logo on there which I liked and also uh, oh here's an interesting fact the bucket over at Disney these these larger size buckets these ones uh, with you know that just have the imprint on them 
they actually came with two two uh, things of popcorn. So I was like really like amazed. I was like, wow, how come I'm getting like two two uh, you know like cartons of, of popcorn? They're like, oh, that's how much fits in here. So it uh, it's a pretty large capacity. It's good good for like storing um, you know whatever crayons or taking to the beach and stuff like that. If you're so inclined, of course, you know us souvenir collectors will never part with these things. It's like. No, you know, that's not that's not what it's for. But, you know, a lot of people, they take it for granted. And then 20 years later, they're like, damn, I wish I would have kept that. Anyhow. <laughs> uh, you should see, because I always do, um, Aljon and I have done the dining plan so many times. And so we have a lot of the souvenir resort cups. Mm -hmm. And I've collected all. Aljon's like, you just need to give them away. Give them to like, give them to like Goodwill or ARC or something like that. I was like, no, I need to keep them. He's like, why do you need five of the same colored ones? You've got like 25 of them. I'm like, that's okay. You right. never know when you're going to want it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and then, oh, here's the other thing. So uh, this, this little baby right here, the, this, the, this is the diamond shaped ice cube. Okay. The glow cube. And I tell you what, I, for being such a small thing, it was a pain in the butt to get. We had went to uh, Maurice's Treats in the uh, Fantasyland uh, area there by the uh, the Fantasyland Theater, and we stood in line for about I don't know, 35, 40 minutes. And when we got up there, there we said, okay, we specifically came here for these diamond shaped cubes. Sorry, we're sold out. What? It's like 9.30, whatever, 10 o'clock in the morning. Are you kidding me? You guys are sold out of these? And they were. And they had one left. The only problem is this one, it, it works, but only works for a little bit. Is If you can see on the video, I'm, I'll try to cut my hands to kind of, yeah. uh, it's not really, yeah, works a little bit. Anyways, um, yeah, so it, this one glows for a little bit, but uh, unfortunately it's kind of on its last leg and, but we'll, we'll keep it as a, yeah. So we had to go over to the Village House restaurant, and we had to wait in another line. And that's when it first opened. It's, I mean, the when we first walked by the Village House restaurant at, like, whatever, 10-ish, it was closed. And we went by at 1030, and then they had opened by that point. And so we had to stand in another, another line to, to go get that. But the, the great thing about being at Pinocchio's Village House, uh, at the Village House, was they had this one here, this Stein. And yeah, see, I keep wanting to ask you about that. Yeah, this, oh, I love this thing. This, okay, so it's as cool as you just, thought it was going to be? <laughs> it is, it is super cool. This is, this is like, shmi, you know, this is my precious. It's so <laughs> awesome. It's so detailed. And for being plastic, I'm astounded, like, how much, detail they were able to get because it, it's done in in like a 3d relief form and you know i the only thing i wish is that they had this in like the real you know doing the real deal like i had said uh in the previous uh, podcast i said you know I, I wish they had more than just the plastic one and i stand stand by that because this thing is so cool and it's so detailed and i'm just i'm i'm amazed at how much detail they were able able to uh get on this thing and uh yeah it has disneyland 60 it has all you know all the uh the lands fantasy land frontier land adventure land so you know it's it's a it's an amazing piece i got two of them of course and one might be going on ebay how much for those uh it was like you know all these numbers like because they're oh, all yeah, different prices so i'm trying to <laughs> think if i remember it wasn't that much if i remember correctly it was only like 10 bucks oh okay because i and was it thinking included it was a drink. Like 15. right yeah. it was either 10 or 12 dollars it wasn't 15 it was okay. like either 10 That's or 12 dollars yeah it isn't it, it's actually a really great price considering uh the level of detail involved in this thing and then over at DCA, oh, and this is the other thing. Uh, if they, if you go to a 24-hour event and you're looking for certain merchandise, go to DCA first because the lines at DCA was, were much less uh, than they were at Disneyland. 
in fact, uh, we had gotten um, the you know the special uh, bucket with the imprint uh, at uh, at uh, the popcorn station there at the end of Buena Vista Street, and they also had the blue Mickey balloon, and there was nobody in line. And I was like, seriously? I mean, it was amazing. Uh, and, and not only that, that that particular popcorn station, ha popcorn stand, has uh, butter popcorn, but it also has caramel popcorn. So you can get one of each, you know, because I said it came with two boxes of popcorn. Well, you can actually get one caramel and one butter or two caramel or whatever, you know what I mean? That's cool. Yeah, so that was very cool. Anyhow, um, the and then the final thing was uh you know the cinderella popcorn bucket which is really cool i know you you disney world folks are like eh, whatever we got this a long time ago but it's still cool nonetheless and uh i was amazed uh you know how much uh went into this design because the wheels actually spin which I, I thought was really cool and not only that i found it interesting they have these little hooks so i'm trying to think like what was the intent of these little hooks at the end at the you know front and back so i'm not sure if it's just you know to kind of hang it on the uh the little you know stand behind the uh popcorn behind the popcorn uh, you know whatever the popcorn machine or if it's there's actually some other kind of purpose maybe they'll you know come out with another series or something make it like a little train that'd be cool right uh -huh. I'll tell you what, if I had one of those when I was a little girl, what I would have done is I would have taken Shira's horse or Pegasus. I think it was the Pegasus that she had. Yes. I would take her Pegasus and I would have attached it to the front so that the Pegasus was pulling along Cinderella's carriage. There you go. Maybe that's maybe that was the intent. Is, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's absolutely what I would have I would have thought to do as a kid. But yeah. I'm I'm sure Disney wasn't thinking that far in advance. <laughs> no, but you know, I you never know. The Imagineers are pretty clever and you know, the way they they design stuff, you know, there's a purpose to almost everything that they do. So I I'm I'm just thinking, you know, either that or, you know, who knows, maybe uh, you know, the in 2018 they're going to come out with a movie about horses and then they'll they'll be like, "Oh, here you go. It's going to attach to your Cinderella bucket." <laughs> I don't know. Or unless they're finding a way to do all of the print, because they're coming out with Beauty and the Beast is the other. Oh, live yeah. Action they're gonna do. If maybe for each one, they're going to have something that specifically relates that you can actually connect all of the princess buckets together. Yeah, the carriages or whatever. Well, they don't all have carriages, but, you know, that's whatever something. they choose for that particular one, you know. Right, right. Exactly. So uh, yeah, I was actually looking on the mine train too. This one you can hook up. It has a little knob in the front, and uh, and it has the the little the hitch in the front, and then the little receptor on the back. So you, these for sure you can interconnect, so you can make a little mine train train, if you will. Now, do those wheels those wheels don't move though, do they? Oh well, yeah, they move as well. well they do. Move. Yeah, so that's pretty cool as well. I love how this thing swivels too. It's really, really awesome. Oh my gosh! Can you? I could imagine if you got a few of those, like for a boy, he'd connect all of those and have so much fun with, you know, attaching something at the the front and. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> our lot action figure sitting on top. Right. So they uh and then to uh okay so here we go so it's getting about 11 ish 11 15 something around that time frame and by that time we we're you know since we eaten at 5 30 in the morning we we're getting you know we we're getting a little bit hungry so i was like okay i want to I, I gotta try something some kind of the one of those specialty food items they're having for the 24-hour kickoff event right we won't we kind of covered the the whole gamut uh in the, in our last episode so one of the things that I really wanted to try was that hot dog at the Hungry Bear restaurant, you know, the one with the uh, fried jalapenos and, and stuff like that. And, the, uh, and so we went there, and this is what we ran into. <laughs> Another huge line. Let me get the, uh, the little Did picture Did you wait? Here. No. I, by that point, that we were, long? It, it, this was <gasps> just the partial line, okay? Every station was open. Every seat inside the restaurant, if I and it's kind of hard to tell in, in the background, but every seat on both floors of the restaurant were packed. 
every table, every seat, everything was packed. And this line went all the way back to the haunted mansion. Wow. Yeah. And this is a counter service restaurant, people. This is like in and out. I mean, it's supposed to be fast, but we are like, you know what? That's it. We gave up. He like said, it, you know, by that point, That's we're, yeah. A really long line. It is. And, and every place had them. And, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that, it, that, you know, that was the case. But, you know, I figured, well, I mean, I, I really wanted to try some of the specialty food, but I, I just couldn't. And that's uh, so unfortunately, I don't have a report about that. However, uh, a friend of ours did go uh, to the resort later. Uh, well, she actually, like way later, she went at 2.30 in the morning. And so apparently uh, there was a rumor that they were doing a special uh, sweet treat just for the 24-hour event. And it was a, it was a caramel uh, wrapped in chocolate. And I didn't know about this at the time that it was there. And they didn't make any announcement on the blog or anything. And, and so it was kind of a surprise. So we're like, oh, yeah, get us one. So she brought it back. And I'll show you a picture of it. And let's see here. No, they're still going to have that hot dog for a little while, aren't they? No, just for the 24-hour event. What a shame. Yep. I was, I was just there uh, this past Thursday, and they didn't have it. So, and in fact, I went to all the place. I went to the village house and some other of uh, the restaurants around just to check to see if they had any of the specialty items and yeah. they did not. So unfortunately it was just for the 24 hour event only, which sucks, but wow. whatever. So we did get this caramel and if you could, if you can, as you can tell by the picture, I mean, it's nothing special looking and you know, I figured, well, it doesn't look special, but maybe it tastes special, right? Okay, so that's the picture of the outside. And then I'll show you a picture. We we actually cut it open before we uh, put, you know, our, our teeth marks on it. How, it yeah. was, how long was that piece? Like three inches or smaller? It was, uh, let's see, I'm probably about... Uh, yeah, about three inches and okay. maybe a little bit longer. So, I mean, you know, it was a pretty good size. I don't know how much it was. Uh, she just, you know, bought it for us and said, oh, don't worry about paying us back. But if you if you can tell, uh, like, by the picture, see how much, see how gritty the texture of the caramel is? Yeah. Yeah. So, unfortunately, it was a major disappointment. And I hate to say that, but yeah, it, it looks was. like they didn't let the sugar dissolve enough. Yep, exactly. So when you bite into it, it's like, you know, it has a really gritty mouthfeel. It was sweet, but I just, it wasn't, I, when I when I eat caramel, I like it to be either, you know, smooth and creamy or, you know, sticky, you know, but still like smooth. where you like bite and, you, you know, you can like pull the piece of caramel for like a foot away from you. Right, right, exactly. Oh. And then you're chewing it for like 10 minutes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, I like I like both styles of caramel. I love caramel, and this one I didn't. So, and that uh, that was unfortunate. But you know, regardless, I mean, it was sweet of her that you know she she got it for us, and you know, I, I at least I could say I tried it, right? And yeah, um, you could say you got something special. There you go, exactly. So the next time I go, uh, I'm I'm gonna be getting the truffles and and uh, the the other uh, you know dessert items because I missed out on those 24 hour specialty food items. Oh, those look so good. Yeah, definitely. So that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, after this, uh, you know, after uh, we, we left around 11, 15, something like that in the morning. And, you know, we just said, you know, at that we're, we're done. Because by that point, I mean, no matter what you did, I mean, regardless, if you want to go to the bathroom, you want to, you know, go to the drinking fountain, you want to buy merchandise, anywhere you went, there was a line of people. Um, the attractions were filled, you know, I mean, it just, from what I read, I guess it filled the capacity at uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. 
and then they kind of alleviate, you know, some people left and, you know, they let more people in and then, you know, they shut it down again. And, you know, so it was, it was just a huge ordeal. And, and, you know, by 11, 15, we were figured, you know, we figured we're done, you know, and plus, you know, you know, at that point it would, it had been our third day, you know, we've been, we had been walking, you know, through Disneyland and, and DCA, you know, for the previous two days, you know, um, since, you know, the, the merchandise event, you just didn't sit there and, and, you know, uh, you know, stay there only at the event. You, you actually had time, you know, between panels and, and other special offerings or whatever you could walk around Disneyland or DCA or whatever. And so that's what we did. Sounds like fun. It was fun overall. It was, a, you know, I had a great time uh, at the merchandise, merchandise event, the 24-hour event for the, for the, uh, you know, I, I, I honestly, I, I probably wouldn't do another 24-hour event. I, I mean, I appreciated this one, and I'm glad that I went. And uh, you know, to and, and I'm, you know, I can say that I can, you know, I was partial, you know, a part of the kickoff party, you know, for the 60th anniversary, and we were able to get all this merchandise. I mean, you could see behind me, which was awesome and spectacular. But you know, honestly, just you know, those 24 events are just too crazy. It just, I don't. Some people like Daniel, Daniel and Tommy and Chris are like, oh yeah, but if you're mentally prepared for it then then it's a good time you know you you're you're uh, you know in a crowd of people and you're all sharing this vibe and this energy and stuff like that but you know when when you have to wait in line to do anything around Disneyland and and you're having to kind of fight crowds just to get from place to place it just it just that's just not a good time for me you know what i mean and see i feel the same way i i don't like to wait in line and that's why i'm glad i have an annual pass and you know you go you know, at Disney World, I go to one park and it's packed and it's, you know, 35 minute wait for the Haunted Mansion. I'm not waiting in that. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm look at the, the My Disney Experience app and I look at the, the wait times at the other three parks and I go, yep, this is where I'm going. There you go. Yeah, I don't, 20, 20 minutes is about as long as I can handle waiting anymore. And the only other time I will wait any longer as if I'm there with friends who, you know, want to ride something and don't ever go on it. And, you know, at that point, then you can kind of, it's a little bit easier to kill the time. You don't feel like you've waited quite as long. Right. Yeah. So, you know, for a full rundown of the, the 24 hour experience from, from people that actually were there, you know, for at least the majority of the 24 hour time period, you can uh, check out the Disc Geek podcast. Uh, our next episode uh, will be recording tomorrow. And, and so it'll be, uh, it'll be released uh, sometime in the near future here. So you check it out and, and uh, we'll, we'll give you the breakdown. I'll, I'll kind of recap my, uh, you know, my, my experience and, and uh, for what for whatever time I had there, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, Chris, and I'm not sure if Daniel went. I mean, I know he was posting some pictures, but I'm not sure if he was doing a repost or something because I think he was going camping with his daughter or something like that. So I'm not sure if he like went for part of the event or if he just kind of said, "Ah, oh, well, you know, I'm just gonna you know skip it all together and just repost I, other people's pics." If or I whatever. remember right, he did not go when he was reposting because I'm pretty sure I made a comment about agreeing with him about not missing that many people in you know at the parks right. there you go oh so, i oh. i know big bub but when he did the whole thing he said there was a certain point where they had locked down disneyland and they weren't allowing any more people in he said it got busy over at dca and then it was dead he said you could pretty much walk on to all the rides and they then had to of course allow people to come back in he said i don't think they had planned it and organized it quite the way they should have with all of that yeah so originally I, he, if you left you couldn't come back in right and that's why people had started disneyland left and went to dca and they had nobody so they're like okay i guess we have to let people back in well, and then here's the other issue, uh, and this is this is food related. A lot of people had made dining reservations, and they wouldn't let them into the park. They said, oh, sorry, you know, I mean, well, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, there's a cancellation fee, right? 
so <laughs> so they had to go to uh guest services to uh you know get that handled and uh yeah that was uh that was a big uh cluster mess <laughs> to say it yeah uh, i know uh nicely. but but was saying he was glad that his wife taylor made reservations because they had reservations i think for lunch at uh carnation cafe and then they had dinner over at hungry bear mm. he's like i'm so glad she did that he's like because they were turning people away if you didn't have a reservation they had no table for you right exactly i was like it's a good thing she thought ahead of time. <laughs> so that's it. That's that's, that's that's my it. that's my whole my whole experience. And you know, it wasn't. I don't know if you found it, uh, you know, enlightening or not. But uh, yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, uh, you know, I did have a you know pretty good time overall. It just you know, just the twenty four hour event. It was a great experience, and I know that I won't be doing it again, which is great. You know, so I mean, who knows? Maybe for like the 75th anniversary, I might, you know, tread lightly and and uh, you know go there and and just to you know pick up some merchandise like we did this time around as well. And uh, you know, but uh, yeah, it's just it was just too much, too much for for me. And and um, you know, those 24 hour days, I just I just don't find them enjoyable, and just too many people. And you know, whatever, it's fine, it's good learning experience. And and um, yeah. That's it. And I'm glad I got all the merchandise. It was really great to, to get everything. Oh, and by the way, that uh, little merchandise list I put out, uh, oh my gosh, that was a, that one gangbusters. Everybody seemed to have loved, loved the list I put together, which is great. And um, I actually saw some people with, that had printed it out uh, walking around the park. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> So that was I was that I was I I felt special. I was like, oh, that's awesome, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that was that was really cool. Now I have a question. When you do the Diz Geek, yours is in, it's not video. It's not on no. YouTube, right? No, it's do not. people do people know what you look like? Do you ever have people walk up and go, hey, Jay? No, and they don't even no. they don't even recognize my voice. I don't have a very distinct voice. <laughs> So, like Tommy Picks, like so people could like hear his voice and they'd be like, "Oh, that's Tommy Picks," you know. And then he—he's also, you know, he's always on Twitter and he always, you know, he does. I, uh, you know, like he does some selfies and same with Chris. He, you know, he does some selfies and stuff. I never do selfies, so, <laughs> you know, they—the only time they see me is on this video cast. Yeah, I'm—I've never been a selfie person. If I take a picture with, with people, it's friends who want to. You know, like, hey, let's take a picture proving we were here, and you know, I'll do that. But like, yeah, I've got some friends who post like ten selfies a day, and I'm like, no. Right. I, I'm just, I'm just look at me. Why do you want to look at pictures of me? Who wants to do that? Nobody. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not very narcissistic. That's for sure. But you know what? You might find people start recognizing you now. We'll be uh, like, oh, maybe. you're that guy from, you know, <laughs> Dining at Disney podcast. I'll tell you when the first time that happened to me, where somebody first, I had, I actually had somebody who was sitting in front of me turn around and go, "Hey, are you Kristen?" Because they recognized my voice. That freaked me out. And the first time that somebody walked up and visually recognized me, I was like, "Okay, this is weird." Like, "Oh, we love your show." I'm like, "Okay." Yeah, that Daniel <laughs> runs into that a lot as well. So it's it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. I'll never get used to it. It doesn't bother Al John because he came from commercial radio. Right, right. So you know they always are like, Hey, we're at Best Buy today, come by and you know, we're giving away blah 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 and yeah, your chance. Twenty percent off refrigerators today. You know, one of those things and sure, so sure. He used to do them and people, you know, that and he, he was in a band at one point. People would walk up, so it doesn't bother him. He right. I'm never gonna get used to it. It just freaks me out a little bit. So, so ready for this I'm ready for some some dessert. I'm getting full. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready too. All right, so let's okay, uh, so, give our dining tips. Okay. My tip is uh you know, Disney World, because of it having four parks and you've got two water parks and you, know, you can go horseback riding and there's so much stuff to do that most people plan an extended stay. You know, it's going to be 
a lot of times people book seven nights, some people book 10 nights, some people book two weeks. Uh, and so to make it cheaper, people will often choose to, you know, go to the grocery store and pick up things like, you know, food to have in the morning, uh, waters and Cokes and all kinds of things like that to make their stay a little bit cheaper. Well, one of the perfect things to, to do to make it easier for you, especially if you have an extended stay, the Disney Va Vacation Club resorts like Saratoga Springs, you know, one of the villas that has the full kitchen in it, and you're going to be cooking is to make it easier. You can order your groceries online and garden grocer actually will deliver the food. You can order tons and tons of things are available online to order from them, but they've got, I think it's like almost 5,000 different things you can choose from. So it's, you know, there's a good selection. Uh, they have competitive prices and include things like kosher, organic, gluten-free. They've got those items for people who have dietary restrictions. And you place your order online and you tell them, okay, I need it delivered this date. And there'll be a two hour window delivery. And they do all of their deliveries between 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. And they'll let you know about 30 minutes prior to arrival that your stuff is being you know, delivered to your resort. Uh, if you order anything that's a cold item or needs to be frozen, they actually use a uh, dry ice to keep them cold. So you don't have to worry about that. It may not have been kept at the proper temperature, um, but they, they have a, an awesome service. And we actually have a link on the website for them as well to make it easy. And I've, I haven't personally used it because uh, we don't spend much time in the room. We're more of like, go, 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 get up at the park, get up in the morning, go to the park, spend all, all day, all night at the park, go back, sleep, shower, and do it all over again. But for people who are going to be spending some time in the room, go, are going to be cooking, I think using Garden Grocer is fantastic. Their minimum is uh, is $40. So, I mean, that's not bad. That's easy to, you know, easy to spend with, you know, say a family of three or four. Yeah. Especially if you're going to be that there that many days and, you know, it's, yeah. it's a, it's, it's a definite, definite money saver. And, you know, sometimes in the morning you don't want to just like, you know, wake up and like, Oh yeah, we got to get to, you know, whatever the magic kingdom or Epcot, you know, for breakfast, you know, that kind of thing. You kind of want like, eh, I want to sleep in and, you know, I want to go in at, you know, 10 or 11 or what have you. And, you know, this way you can prepare your own breakfast at your, your room and you don't have to worry about it. So it's cool. It's yeah, a great and, idea. And with the ones that have kitchens, I mean, you can make bacon and eggs and everything you can there make you at home in your, in your room. So yeah, there you go. So uh, for Disneyland, uh, the food tip I have is, let's say you're eating something at uh, Blue Bayou or whatever, or, or you know, one of the other Cafe Orleans or, you know, the Tomorrowland Terrace or something like that. And you're like, wow, that's really good. And, you know, I wonder how they make that. Well, if you want to know the recipe, all you'd have to do is ask. Um, the recipes uh, for uh, Disneyland can be found at City Hall. And at DCA, I uh, believe it's the Chamber of Commerce has the recipes. Now, I will say that I've never gotten a recipe from Chamber of Commerce, so I don't know this uh, for a fact, but this is what I'd heard that you can get the rep recipes from there. If not, you can get them uh, directly from the restaurant if, if possible. You know, um, I know some places like uh, one time we were at the Storytellers Cafe, and we had this uh, um, croissant bread pudding. Oh, it was awesome. It was, it was the best bread pudding I've ever had in my entire life. I mean, it was just absolutely amazing. And so I said, oh, I wonder how they make it. And the server overheard us. And they're like, oh, would you like the recipe? And I was like, well, heck yeah. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, the, he uh, went to the, the computer there at the, the Storyteller Cafe, uh, you know, the terminal or whatever, and he had it printed out, you know, and, and uh, brought it to us. So I was like amazed. I was like, oh, wow, you, you had it like on demand. So some some restaurants, uh, probably that, that would be the same with um, 
Napa Rose because their menu is seasonal and you know Disneyland can't store every single recipe and you know in their their database there you know or uh, on paper so I'm not sure you know uh, which places it's available which it's not and I, I guess you know whatever you just have to check and uh, anyways the um, let's see here the oh the way that they used to have it was that they had these recipe books at Disneyland uh, for City Hall and you just all you had to do was request a uh, you know like to see the the uh, recipes and they'd give like a huge book right and the the you you could peruse through the the recipes and like oh yeah you know I want that recipe or whatever now apparently I guess because you know they they got a little bit tattered and torn and you know the cast members are like okay well just let us know which recipe you want so they'll they'll get it for you you know that that exact recipe and then the other thing too you have to take into consideration is that some of the recipes they do it on a large scale so <laughs> you're gonna have to do some you know some kind of you know some math there you know what I mean like okay maybe like one quarter of that recipe or you know half of that recipe or whatever you know that kind of thing so just just be leery of that you know when when they do give you a recipe it's probably going to be on a larger scale than than what you're accustomed to you know in the standard recipe book yeah you might not want to make something for 40 people unless you're right party. yeah exactly I mean you could but yeah it's uh, you have a lot of leftovers and uh, probably go bad eventually <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you could eat the same dinner for like two weeks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so that's it. That's my tip. Okay. Well, I think that wraps up our show for this week. So Jay, tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, you can find me at magicalfoodtour.com and also on the Diz Geek Podcast. And uh, on Twitter, that's at Diz Geek Podcast, or you can go to uh, DizGeek.com. And uh, also on Twitter for Magic Food Tour, it's at Magic Food Tour and stuff like that. And you can find Jay and I at diningatdisney.com. Um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, it's Dining at Disney. On YouTube, it is The Dining at Disney. And please make sure to uh, send us some emails. We love to get some mail. So you can email us at podcast at diningatdisney.com with any questions, comments, or stories you have, we always love to hear some stories. Or you can call us at 615-992-DADP, which is 3237. Make sure to subscribe and download uh, download all of our episodes from iTunes. And we are part of the We Be Geeks network. So you can also find us there at webegeeks.net. Until next time, I'm Kristen, with me is Jay, and bon appetit.